to Kay Lindsay. And um, when you're ready, if you'd like to take it away. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. And um, oh, how do I turn off the pingy noise to start the notifications again? Sorry. Oh, if you go to the uh, contact in the chat bar. Yeah. Um, and then drop down the notification settings. Uh, there's under someone post a chat message, um, and audio notification is the middle one that should be unticked. Okay. All right. I think that's done. Uh, yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. Hope, hopefully that works. I won't be too distracted. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. And um, I'm not sure how many of you have. Um, are down to present today and if any of you are as unprepared as I am um, it's highly likely that my children and my cat may make an appearance in this um, in this presentation um, but thank you very much for everyone joining today um, I'm going to talk first of all a little bit about where I come from the institution that I'm at and um, a little bit about the students that we have I come from an institution called the University College of Estate Management. Okay, and uh, this we are celebrating our centenary year. Well, we just finished actually. It, we are an institution that focuses purely on delivering degrees in the built environment sector. So that's things like building surveying, um, quantity surveying, um, and construction management. Our building was originally sited in a place called Lincoln Field in London and the institution initially provided free technical education in real estate and related areas for the sons of those who had been killed, disabled or impoverished in World War I and they called for improved living standards and living conditions, including for city some slums to be replaced with better housing. By the 1940s, we were providing largely correspondence courses, including in including during the Second World War to prisoners of war and the Women's Land Army. And in the late 1960s, we became associated with the University of Reading, who awarded our degrees for us. We built this wonderful building that you see in the centre here, great brutal building on campus, and our students were studying on-site and via correspondence. In 2013, we received our own degree awarding powers, and in 2016, we left the Reading campus. And with the exception of our apprenticeship programs, where students come into the building to undertake workshops, or actually at the moment virtually, we are now a fully on university, and we offer 13 programs of study, right from further education up to master's level. Okay, so a little bit about our students. We have 4,000 in 4,000 students enrolled with us at any one time. Um, our students are from around 100 countries. About 20% of our students are apprentices, and we're expecting that to rise in the next few years to be at least of our students. And only 3% of our students study full time. The rest of our students are already employed by the industry or are looking for a career change, either working full time or part time. 90% of our students are over 21 years of age, and um, the average age of our students are 34. Reflecting the statistics in the industry, only 30% of our students are female, and that's something that we work very hard to address in our institution. 10% of our students have a declared disability, and 15% of our students are from a BAME background, and again, that reflects the um, industry statistics there. It is worth noting that that does not include quite a high proportion of Chinese uh, students that we have, and we actually have offices in Hong Kong as well in Reading. Okay, um, our students have very complex lives. They're unable to dedicate the time they would like or the motivation that they would like to into our studies for the very reasons I just outlined. Most of them are part time. They have other responsibilities. They have caring responsibilities. They have work responsibilities. They find it hard to focus and have motivation. Um, they may suffer from poor internet connection, feelings of isolation, and also mental well-being, which is which is a big factor in the construction industry, and men are much more likely to actually commit suicide in and all other industry sectors in the UK. But this is not just 
an issue, these challenges don't just affect our learners, these challenges are symptomatic of many online learning experiences. And I think at the moment, many students in education and as ourselves are, are, are familiar with some of these challenges listed here. It would be really easy for me to flip this talk into something that examines the role of care in online education to focus on the current situation that the world is in at the moment. It's a time when we're all exploring how we can be there for our students and how we can be there for each other, whether that be through our teaching practices, teamwork, as a manager, as a peer. But the truth is for us, as one of only a couple of fully online universities in the UK, we are established in doing this. It's not been a huge amount of work for us at the moment in terms of doing our educational model. We are largely running as is at the moment, um, with a few exceptions, such as um, removing our exams and replacing those with assignments, and we're going to continue doing that in the future anyway. We have had to take a lot of our working practices online, so all of our meetings, our design collaborations, our committees, and whilst part of these were all virtually as well, um, we always have people zooming in. It, you know, it is a change to our working practices. And the real opportunity that this brings us is that we now can really start to understand our students' experiences better. And that is a good thing. So I am going to talk about what I originally proposed, about how we can provide a framework that puts the psychology of our students at the heart of online education and not just making it add-ons. But also as a fundamental part of our learning design that enacts the curriculum of a present scaffolding, which builds community and human connection. Um, but what I am going to change slightly, actually, is the participation and input from anyone listening to this talk right now, because I'm really keen to learn from you and what you are doing in your institutions at this time to demonstrate care to students as, as you may be pivoting online. OK, I'm going to state an intervention in my own talk um, to talk a little bit about the place I grew up. I grew up in Sheffield. And if you know anyone who is from Sheffield or went to university there, it's likely they won't hear a bad word said about the place. It's vibrant, it's green, it's friendly. And despite the challenges that it's faced over time with the, the rise of the steel industry, it continues to feel a very positive city to be in. Something that stands out across the city, wherever you lived or wherever you grew up, is its sense of community. And an example I really love is that when housing stock became so poor after the Second World War, dangerous and unfit for habitation, a network of high rise flats were built. And entire streets and communities were moved into the estate. Neighbours continued to be neighbours. The same milkman and the postman drove their vehicles along the widely constructed corridors. Streets were moved exactly as they were into the sky. And for a long time, those communities flourished. They had a sense of purpose, belonging, and shared history that went beyond the space that they inhabited. And the example you can see here is actually um, Park Hill Flats in Sheffield. But over time, the fabric of these buildings were not maintained. The original residents aged and they passed away. Unemployment rose as a result of layoffs in the steel industry, and with it, so crime rose, drug use of drugs rose, violence rose. Residents became much more diverse with no cohesion programs to integrate new communities. We have moved now what we know into a virtual space. We have moved traditional ways of teaching into the online. And whilst for a time this may suffice, and it may be good enough, over time, it becomes clear that the virtual space is not the same as an on-ground university campus and classrooms. And the glue that holds it together, that community, that human contact, is the missing factor. OK, so last OER, I was presenting our work in progress for developing an online educational framework. And this work has now progressed to a realisation that we need more than a neat learning design model. Learning is really messy. People are really messy and complex, and it can't be addressed by a systematic design progress. As Stolman and Morris would say, there is an urgency for teachers. There's an urgency for human connection. And as Bell Hooks has written, the requirements for building our knowledge of our students and acknowledgement of their presence is fundamental to a good learning experience. 
But practically, in an online university, how do we do this when the scale of online education can actually be so great that we have hundreds of students in each class and very few tutors to support them? Okay, we need to look at the entire estate. It may not be pretty, but we need to look at the whole thing. We need to look at how to support fully online education, how we can implement the practice of being human at a scale that goes beyond the weekly webinar and the VLE forum. At UCM, we are starting with the ground floor renovation. And whilst our plan is to redesign our entire educational provision over the next five years, this September, our aim is to reimagine that first year student experience. It's what we would call perhaps a weed out year with between 10 and 20% of students failing each module or 10% withdrawing or suspending their studies. These modules don't have to do anything to make them difficult. The topics covered by themselves make them difficult. Quantities surveying, law, management, regulatory frameworks. Our student situation, their psychology also make them difficult to deliver. And then you bring to it tutors who have a lot of training and a wealth of expertise in their surveying and their construction background, but not a lot of training in their teaching. And it becomes even more complicated. And it's made even more confirmation to advise the vulnerable position that we put them in, in the online environment, where they're constantly being tested on how they communicate. We have a unique opportunity with our ground floor. We have an opportunity to teach students how to be university students, how to become online learners, as well as master the foundation of their programs of study and how to establish those caring pedagogies ourselves that build community and online human practice at scale to ensure that our residents are supported and that they are happy. Around our educational framework, we have wrapped a set of values that scaffold the online student experience, which is open to who our students are and the world that they live in. These make up the acronym of CARE, and they stand for kindness, awareness, reflection, and engagement. And overall, they aim to build community and establish critical students to student students, incorporate active learning strategies, and help students improve their metacognition skills. And these are implemented within the module learning design itself. They don't sit outside in student support services. Okay, I'm just going to move on to this slide and just leave it there for a moment perhaps you could stick that url in your web browser go to the padlet board and in that board there's four columns columns kindness awareness reflection and engagement and it would be great if as we go through this presentation and maybe as we go through the rest of the day or further into the week if you can note down anything that your institutions are doing to um bring pe caring pedagogies into their online religion, um, online educational provision at the moment. And I'll write a blog post up on those at the end. So we've got lots more lovely pictures of the Park Hill um, estate still coming up as I explain what these four elements are and how we implement them. Okay, kindness. Kindness very much starts from a place of trust. We trust that our students want to actually be there and we trust them to be honest and rigorous in their studies. We focus on their psychology, their motivation and what they need to interact with the content to achieve their outcomes. We're moving student support services into the study space. We have a great well-being team. We have mental health first aiders. But when those exist outside of the curriculum in other places in the VLE and when students just want to come in and focus on what they need to learn, then we need to move those support services to places where they can really see them. So we're starting to signpost things, for instance, in the lead up to the assignments. Are you stressed? Are you worried? These people can help you. Similarly, we're embedding study skills within the curriculum. They don't just sit out in the study skills area. We're creating activities so students can improve things such as their digital literacy, their critical analysis skills, their metacognition skills. And very importantly, we are creating an informal and personal narrative. We address students as you, the institution as we are us, and we are not scared to use the word I in our written narrative to our students.
We want to help our students to develop self-awareness. The practice of building awareness supports the transition of focusing so much on the academic content to the broader outcomes and those outcomes being very focused on the students that we're serving. It also serves to create cohesion. We create opportunities for students to develop self-awareness of basic needs, how they feel, how they motivate themselves to work towards their goals. We also embed opportunities for students to become aware of each other, which enables them to support each other and to practice kindness. We also want them to become more aware of the world around us and people they may not have contact with. The built environment industry has some really big issues facing it around sustainability, around mental health around caring for our planet and being mindful of diversity. So the more that we bring these topics into the curriculum and have those discussions is really valuable for our students. The reflective part of care is very much about mission and helping students to understand their learning journey as online learners. We're providing end of week opportunities for students to evaluate their learning and practice their metacognitive skills and ask questions about where they should be. We provide personal learning checklists um, so students can monitor um, their learning and their confidence in mastering the topics and the skills that they need to. There's regular opportunities for students to reflect on applying what they've learned to their own experiences. And we embed quite a lot of activities that include things such as creating mindful concept maps so students can start to develop their metacognitive awareness and understanding. And active learning, engaged learning, is really a pivotal piece to supporting our students to immerse themselves and start to work with the material so that they can learn with it. We've significantly shifted this away from resources to activities and made these worthy in the student language. So there's a really clear and transparent reason why they be, are being asked to do those activities. Completion of activities do not actually gain our students any marks, but they are woven into the fabric of their assessments. So to undertake them enables them to move forward in completing their module and gaining those very important outcomes they need to be successful in their work. Okay, in terms of practical implementation, um, we have set up a learning design centre, which is a whole host of resources for our tutors to use when designing learning. But our tutors do not design their modules solely on their own. We form a collaborative team that each time we, uh, we approach a model, there is a team of learning designers, quality assurance experts, editorial subject matter experts, tutors, librarians who come together and bring together that wealth of expertise. It is a very unbundled model and all that expertise is really valuable. And we use the ABC Learning Design Workshop, which we have localized for our own more vocational and um, fully online setting. And we have a couple of days of um, ABC workshops whereby we storyboard the modules and we develop um, um, a, a list of activities and then narrated throughout the module. We provide templates, we have um, quality baseline statements and standards uh, to ensure that there is that consistent approach and to also raise the profile of the caring pedagogies that we want to implement within our modules. We do have a website and I was going to make it available to you all today, but we are doing a significant overhaul. So if you do follow me on Twitter, um, I will be posting the link, in, the link in the next few weeks and it will show you exactly how we start from the design process, how we develop those learning activities, how we bring in those caring pedagogies and how we move that onto the VLE and what it looks like. Um, and I'm really happy to share any, um, anything we've learned around that. Okay, so to finish off, Park Hill Flats in Sheffield is undergoing a major refurbishment, of course it is, a huge gentrification, and now those flats are going for you know upwards of £200,000. A very, very different community is moving into them. But I think what we have to remember, part of me is very pleased about that, I'm pleased to see the gentrification um, 
but we are losing that element of community again unless we realize and understand the fabric of the buildings and who our students are then it's going to be difficult to bring that human connection and that human nature into fully online education but it's something that we are certainly striving to achieve at UCM and move past the not yet of fully online education and realize what it means to have an excellent online learning experience thank you Thank you so much, Kate. Um, such an excellent and informative uh, presentation. Um, I'm afraid that we have actually used our full um, 20 minutes. Um, yeah. um, <laughs> there are a couple of questions. Um, everyone that's our answer. <laughs> there are a couple of questions in um, in the chat. Um, one from Mary. Um, and then um, a couple about your your contacts as well. So maybe if you're able to dive into the chat in a moment um, and respond to those directly, and then any um, kind of further chats might be able to continue within the social space um, afterwards, if if that's okay with you. But um, yeah, once again, Kate, thank you ever so much.